Welcome back to Primetime Lawmakers. I'm Scott Slade. As we just saw in Iwandi's report, the Georgia Chamber of Commerce held its annual Eggs and Issues Breakfast this morning. Governor Nathan Deal, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, and Speaker of the House David Ralston all addressed the crowd. And among the issues raised were the creation of an education advisory group, expanding the state reservoir system, and establishing a water supply task force. And joining us now live in the studio is Buddy Darden, a former U.S. representative and Georgia state legislator. Mr. Darden is the attorney uh, representing Georgia's interest in the water wars in Alabama and Tennessee. Also with us this evening is political analyst Bill Crane with the consulting firm CSI Crane, a firm here here in Atlanta, a veteran of many political campaigns, and he's a veteran of crisis management and so many other things. It's great to have you both with us this evening. Thanks. Thank you. So glad to be here. I was a page of the legislature in 1955, so I've been watching them with great interest ever since that time. I think 1963 or 64 for me with Quimby Melton Jr. Out of Griffin. I was right. a lawmaker's intern. So there we are. Yes. So we're all we're Been all around a this. little while. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's start with water. You know, Governor Deal is talking about a Georgia water supply development program, and you know, he's uh, it sounds like he's very aggressive in in, in this, uh, buddy. Uh, you know. Where do we go from here? You've been on the inside That's of this. That's what it's going to take, Scott. It's going to take aggressive leadership. You can't sit back and expect this situation to work itself out in the courts or for the governors just to come up with some agreement at the last minute. We've got to look out for ourselves. And the fact that Governor Deal is from the Gainesville area, where Lake Lanier is such a key to the economic success of the area as well as the entire North Georgia area. He is involved in this and, and he is committed. So it's good to see the governor take this on as an issue. And we will only solve the problem with leadership from the highest level, and that's the governor's office. Uh, he's indicated before even taking office that uh, he wants to aggressively meet with his counterparts in Alabama and Florida. Has any such meeting been set up yet? Well, I, I got an indication of what he said today on the radio that he is working at it. Of course, I hope he's having meetings with them, uh, not in the public light, because mm -hmm. uh, once they start announcing their meeting, then I think uh, all the media attention and all the uh, coverage that it has might be counterproductive. So I think it's good for the governors to open discussions, not only among themselves, but also through their surrogates. And I'm sure they're already working on it now. At least I hope so. And, and Bill, that would be really one of the easiest ways out, wouldn't it? For them well, to get together with a deal, the, right? The governor of Florida and the governor of Alabama have much less, comparatively speaking, political experience in office than, than Governor Deal does and less experience with the water issues. But they're sitting in the catbird seat because the judge's decision, Judge Magnuson's ruling was basically in their favor. So there's mm -hmm. got to be something put out that's in their benefit. And if we have more reservoir capacity, as an example, in Georgia, that's more water that goes into the aquifers. That's more water that goes back into the system downstream. And it has to be sold that way. If that's you, right. If you raise the water table for Lake Lanier one foot, that's billions of more gallons that go into the lake and that go into the Chattahoochee River through the dam, Buford Dam, that eventually be used downstream. At the same time, though, I believe that the appellate courts will give us a little wiggle room if we indicate that we're willing to negotiate and work it out, and Georgia comes across as a reasonable party. In the beginning, Georgia was not considered to be the reasonable party, but here lately, we've made some concessions and we've made some efforts, and again, the issue, though, has got to be leadership mm -hmm. from the governor's office. Governor Nathan Deal has got to be the person out front to make this happen. And the Linkage, not to spend too much time on any one issue, when the oil spill occurred and all the Metro Atlantans didn't go to the beaches in the Florida Panhandle, you can see why Apalachicola, which is where the water ends up, cares about Atlanta because there's a whole lot of economic ties, tourism and real estate ownership, etc. Mm -hmm. So you can't down there look upstream and say, we can strangle Atlanta and we'll take the growth because it's interconnected. And, right? and the cost of digging new reservoirs it would just be prohibitive. I mean, we well, don't you, have the money to do that, do we? Well, we've got to at least look at some options in that area. I don't think you're going to do enough reservoirs to totally solve the problem. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, we ought to be looking at ways to increase our capacity at the same time. Or and accepting we, and, places. Exactly. Like the, the, the Vulcan Reservoir that's yeah. above the mm -hmm. northwest Atlanta yeah. that the city's going to turn, city of Atlanta is going to turn into a, a park. And yeah. all, already some are going to develop, but right. we've got to complete. It'll be interesting to see that as a court to, yeah. to move on just, just briefly. That Who knows? It could even be, be you know, thrown out on appeal, right? I mean, that could happen right. still. Okay, well, watch that. Among the issues raised uh, in the Eggs and Issues Breakfast this morning, uh, creation of an education advisory group. Uh, the governor wants more input on how to get more out of our education bucks. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, what does that mean? He's just, he's reaching out or? Well, it, you, you may remember kind of the flip when Zell Miller was governor. He actually reached across the aisle and worked with a Republican superintendent of education and involved, and it was Linda Shrinko, involved her in more direct decision making. This governor has talked about wanting to give more local control back 
to the boards of education and the superintendents, give them the money that they're going to get, but tell them they have more discretion in how to spend it. And I think this is a bridge to get there. I think the governor has a real dilemma here because I think his heart is with public school education, and I think he wants to see it grow and prosper. But at the same time, a lot of the leadership and a lot of his support uh, is toward uh, choice. school choice and uh, toward uh, private school vouchers and other areas. And so I think the governor's walking a very narrow path here. I think his heart's in the right place, but at the same time, when he looks at the people who supported him during the election, he's got, he's got to at least accommodate them as well. And I think he, I think right now, he has a luxury. He mm -hmm. has a luxury of being able to say, let me get more input. Let me think about it. Because he's still on his honeymoon. Yeah. And this would be no time to start uh -huh. choosing First among lady, your Sandra friends. First lady, Sandra Deal was a teacher all of her professional and, and, career. And so he gets parents. a little bit of kitchen cabinet. And, right. and, and, right. and have nearly school. have his bond yeah. packages for K-12 through education, right. too. So right. yeah, he's in it. Stacey Abrams, the representative you heard say that she thinks education is underfunded. Uh, are we getting what we're paying for now? It's $10.6 billion of last year's budget. We don't know yet what the number will be this year. It's the largest line item. If you look at pre-K, which is where we really start all the way up through college, it's mm -hmm. almost two-thirds of the budget. New Jersey spends twice per capita what we do and gets a bad mm -hmm. result. I don't think it's solely about dollars. But the, but the state has a primary responsibility for the education of the workforce. And whatever it takes, we've got to make that commitment, not just in terms of dollars, but also giving it the legislative attention and frankly, the status, uh, doing what we can to raise the status of public education and train a workforce so that we've got the people who uh, are qualified to do the jobs that are being created. Uh, regret, fortunately, we've been able to get enough imports in the last few years to take care of our high tech jobs. We haven't been educating enough people to uh, handle these jobs in this state. Our talk about education, Hope Scholarship, shoring up the Hope Scholarship Fund is coming up over and over again. The actuaries are saying this thing's going to be in big trouble in a couple of years. They're well, talking it's in trouble now. They're in the reserves now. Exactly, but I mean, to the point where we're going to have to start looking at uh, not not a full ride in, in tuition. Uh, Senator uh, Jack Hill, Appropriations Committee Chairman, last night on this program said that the Georgia Lottery used to be, do a better job raising more money. Okay, do we need to find new ways to gamble? Well, they, they, they keep on every every year. They're still growing. Uh, it's a great success. And sure. I don't think we can fault the lottery for what they've been doing. I think they run a pretty good operation. But the Georgia lottery and, of course, the Hope Scholarship is the holy grail. And this has got to be And a third addressed. rail. A third rail. <laughs> You're exactly right. It <laughs> is, touch it is that to the at state what risk. Social Security yes. is at the national level. And we are going to have to address this, and we're going to have to make it work. We can't, we've got to be very careful, too, uh, not to make it solely means tested. We've got to make some adjustments, sure, but at the same time, it needs to be based on merit. And I think the legislature realizes this, but at the same time, we've got to somehow maybe cut, cut back in, in certain things that HOPE does, but it's got to be there for everyone. Two quick points. One is that there were a lot of things added on to HOPE since it was created mm -hmm. on merit. There's Boy, grants, yeah. there's remedial, there's second chance, and I think uh, Senator Hill said some of those things have got to go. And mm -hmm. then new revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are states, seven of them, that use video lottery terminals. They bring in in Delaware, which has a sixth of mm -hmm. the population in the state of Georgia, $300 million. Rhode Island was $250 million in gaming revenues just on those video lottery terminals. Bingo, which Thurbert Baker was pushing when he was running for governor, letting mm -hmm. churches and nonprofits bring some new types of folks who don't typically play the scratch game or the pick quick pick mm -hmm. into the mix and bring in more revenue. Look at that as well as the you know cutting benefits. Look at new revenue options. Okay. Well, as you know, it probably would not be necessary either for uh, the legislature to pass an act which would would uh, authorize these machines. I think right. you could they, probably bring the machines the in Georgia, without additional The Georgia law. Lottery so Commission maybe has that Maybe that's what Senator Hill yeah. was, the gender, was talking yeah, the Lottery about. Commission has that. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Do. Lottery folks told me they, they could do that. Okay, we got about a minute left here, uh, gentlemen. Uh, with the short budget and a new administration, we have a real atmosphere from cha for change. We talked about maybe expanding gambling to, to a small. So what do you think, Bill? What's going to happen? Sunday sales? Sunday liquor maybe? sales. I think you're going to get a think? local referendum. I do think you may see the VLTs. I don't think you're going to see big tax increases. I don't think this governor is going to sign off on bringing sales tax back on groceries. But but big things. Uh, buddy, go ahead. Big well, well as, like as, as you know, of course, the council now has completed its work. Mm -hmm. And the committees are somewhat hamstrung because they've either got, got to uh, 
do the whole package or not. They can't just cut taxes and, 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 at, the same, and at the same time uh, leave others alone. So I think you're going to see very little activity on this tax reform this time. I, I think we're going to have to study this another year. Yeah, they've got another two years. Year, There's no least. timetable that least. we have to accept. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting yeah. to see if there's some uh, penal system reform as well, getting older inmates in the nursing homes, that sort of thing. So and nonviolent offenders getting released early. Exactly. Well, thanks so much for joining us this evening. This and don't great. forget immigration. <laughs> yes. yeah, oh, yeah. That's big. And the State of the Union message tonight. Uh, will the president uh, pop some new infrastructure programs? A lot, a lot of people waiting to hear two words. That's right. Oh, uh, three words. Deepening Savannah Harbor. <laughs> this evening, so. In Congress, they're calling this date night because uh, Democratic members and Republican members are you look, teaming you up and going together. You guys look great together this evening, by the way. It's great to see you this evening. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. So coming up tomorrow on, on Prime Time Lawmakers, immigration reform legislation is expected to be introduced in the House. Among other things, the bill will require the use of the federal E-Verify program for private employers in the state. We'll continue our leadership interview series. Senate President Pro Tem Tommy Williams is scheduled to appear, plus in-depth analysis with legislative and policy experts in education and all the latest Capitol news. That's tomorrow night at 7. And coming up next to GPB, Bert Wolf Travels and Traditions. Tonight, Bert visits Holland. That's coming up next right here on GPB. Thanks to our guests for joining us. That's our broadcast for this fourth legislative day of the 2011 season. Thanks to Buddy Darden and Bill Crane and for M. Wandy Lawson and the whole Primetime Lawmakers team. I'm Scott Slade. Have a great night.